everyone. Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're working on something really cute and simple and probably really fast, probably one of the fastest things we've ever done here in the quilt shop, but I keep seeing this on Facebook. It's the chicken pin cushion. And of course you can make it in many different ways. You can add little wings, you can have buttons for eyes, you can make it so that it's a felt beak and the comb and I mean, and a tail, if you didn't know tail, you know, it's com it's completely up to you. These are just two, actually three. I'm actually, I made more. They're kind of addicting actually. They're kind of fun to make. I'm saying, I have to make this one because he's a big one. He's going to be like little mascot for the quilt shop, you know, because he's, you know, he's got crazy little hair hawk going on or little, you know, chicken hawk thingy. I don't know. And of course it had to give him a tail. You know, that's just who I am. And of course you use just button, not buttons, but uh, pins because he's a pin cushion for, for the eyes or you could use buttons. It's totally completely up to you. So this one right here, where did my pin go? Oh, geez. This way here. Uh, so this way you could just like, uh, if you wanted to have, uh, say red, so we'll put red for his little eyes. See, just like that. See, super cute, eh? And there you go. Alrighty. So we're going to make pretty much one of those. But I've used, it was actually a leftover, this is great for using leftover chunks and squares. You can of course build them as big as you like. This one was seven inches. I used two, two seven inch squares and these one are four inches. Both of these right here and this also is a four inch. Okay. You can use just batting, or not batting, um, yeah I guess so. It's just the, the polyfill, that sort of stuff to stuff them or you can use uh, these weighted beads that are for like weighted blankets, bean bags, neck, pi neck pillows, you know, hacky sacks, all those sort of fun stuff. You can put some of those in there, combination of thereof. These ones are just stuffed, but uh, the one I'm, we're gonna do today, I'm gonna put a little bit of both in it, okay? So, and uh, these two squares were literally from the quilt you'll see behind me here is one of my one of my favorites that I've ever done. It's the maple leaf quilt. And uh, I just had a couple of squares left over, so I'm gonna turn it into a little chicken. Okay, so you can either match the red, the red, the white, the white, but as you, you get it, you only need two pieces. So you got to know that each side is going to be represented by that piece, right? So if you want it to look even, then I would put it to the red, to the red and the white, to the white. But if you want something a little crazy that, you know, he's a wild red rooster or something like that, you can, you can mix it and match it. So, but I think I'll put them together. So really it's uh, like four pieces in, unless you want to make a tail, then it's like five pieces. Um, so you have your two little squares, either, like I said, just four and a half, five and a half, ten and a half, eleven and a half, whatever, how big, which chicken, and how much stuffing you got. And, uh, and you make it that way. So you take your little square, I think this was two and a half and two and a half. For this, this size, I made a good size beak. To me, you may think it's a bit big, but that's okay. That's, I like it. Um, and then you just literally, I think that's called prairie point. So you mix corner to corner, meet, meet, not mix, meet corner to corner, and then you flip it again over here, and you meet those corners. So all those raw edges are together, and you have a fold and a little flappy. And I just realized that this guy's beak's up, upside down, so he's more like a pelican than the chicken. <laughs> We'll leave him over there. We may switch him, but you kind of want it so the the fold is up and the little opening is down because that kind of represents the beak. So I clearly just noticed that. We'll hope we'll put something. In. You know what? There we go. Oh yeah, there we go. We figured out a purpose for it. <laughs> so anyways, you want to make sure that the fold is at the very top so the beak is facing down, okay? So figure out where you want your top of your chicken. So if I want to make sure that I want his, his head to be this part right here where the red is, okay? I want to make sure that when I put my beak in, it is with the fold up, okay? And you can place it anywhere, not too far down, because you do want it to represent part of the head, right? It's, it's, it's going to be closer to the top. And of course, like I say, you can probably make yours a little bit smaller, but, you know. And uh, just pop a little pin to hold it for a second. And then you're going to kind of make the little comey hawk thing there. And there's many different ways. I watched um, uh, Jenny from Missouri Star Quilt Company. I watched her a couple of times on, on, on making this and she uh, did a couple of reverse. I did them with a little fold and a little pleat sort of thing on those two. And then this one, I just used some pinking shears and had like four or five, yeah, it's four layers of you know, fabric. This one, I think I'm just gonna do a little fold, but leave it with the pinking shears up so it'll get a little frayed after a while, get all, you know, comey-like. 
sorry, <laughs> pulled the fluff off. All right, so and you want to make sure that goes up at the top over on this side here, okay? Because you're putting it on this corner and then up on this corner to represent the top of the chicken head, okay? And now you want to make sure that the fold is to the inside because you're going to stitch that down because you want this ruffled edge out. So you can decide how close you want it to the edge, if you're going to add a couple of pleats or just going to leave it straight on. I kind of like it with the little pleats. kind of gives it a little bit of a dimension, so why not, right? Come on the wild side. And then put a pin in there to hold it. When you put this layer on, you're going to shift the pin around and, and um, include it for the top. Okay, you're just trying to hold it for now. Okay, so just like that. And then of course I want my chicken to be redhead, so I'll put him just like that. You can line up those seams. Okay, so I'm gonna take this pin out, hold it where those folds were. Okay. Okay, and then I may wanna put another pin in. Okay, just like that. And then make sure you leave enough room at this edge here to give yourself the dimension of the top of the head for the chicken, eh? Okay, you just wanna make sure you just give yourself just enough, okay? Move my little buddies off to the side. I feel like I'm not lonely in the shop if I got my little chicken buddies. <laughs> I do normally have chickens in the yard, so it's, uh, it's nice to have, and chickens are good company. Just send it all out to my, my chicken girls out there. <laughs> There's a few of them. Okay, so now the key to this is to giving it the dimensions. You're gonna sew three sides. Uh, it like this, this, and this, uh, and then this, the back part ends up getting pinched together. Yeah, well, that's not someone, that's why. Um, gets pinched together, and then you sew it across that way to give you this dimension. That's where you would stick your tail in, too, if you wanted it to be that way. And it's also just another, just a prairie point, um, sim simple and easy. The only thing you want to do is when you're doing the very bottom, because this is the top of the head, this is the side of the face, and then the bottom here, is you want to give yourself a space to turn this inside out, okay? Because that's also going to be where you're going to stuff it, okay? So we're going to start at this end. We're going to stitch about an inch and a half, back stitch, leave a gap, come over here, back stitch, stitch all the way to the end, and then go all the way in around, okay? And that's going to give us a space to turn it, okay? There's so many cute, simple, and easy projects out there, and, and fun little cute ones, you know, like the, you know, um, uh, tighten the tension, hanging in there, wall hanging. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and, and the fishy quilt we just did, that was a lot of fun too. And quilting it up. Oops, for some reason that didn't... That didn't go as planned. <laughs> we kind of got stitching halfway when we were like supposed to be done. So, did I not load my bobbin correctly here? Un momento. Okay. Probably not. Okay, let's try this again. All right, there we go. A little back step, and then give you a little space to turn it right side out. Okay, if you need a little bit more, it's, it's what you're gonna hand stitch anyway, so it's completely up to you. Um, but give your, try and get those corners machine stitched because they look really nice and precise if they're machine stitched. Now make sure that you're getting all your edges here, all your, your four edges of your beak and your two edges of your little chicken pieces, okay? And you can always trim that if it's getting in your way. Okay. And then come up to the top. Stop. Now always lift your foot when you're pivoting and keep your needle down. Okay, now we're gonna enclose his little chicken hawk. Or comb. It looks like a mohawk to me, that's why I call it chicken hawk. <laughs> chicken hawk. It reminds me of that, uh, the Looney Tunes cartoon. Okay, now, doo -doo -doo. now we take our little pins out. Now we can check this before we sew the pinch, go and sew pinch this side to make sure that it's looking like what we're wanting our little chicken to look like. And you're gonna poke out those little corners, okay? And this is a good chance, okay, you didn't get all the stitches or something got missed or something, this is where you can come back and fix them. So isn't that totally cute? Totally cute. So, and then now we pinch these two sides together and that gets him to stand up just like that and then we'll stuff them, okay? So we're gonna turn them 
back side out or right side out, right side in. Anyways, we're gonna put them this way. <laughs> and then we're gonna sew us back in together, okay? And we did leave our little gap here to make sure that we can fill it, okay? So now you wanna meet your seams. That's why it doesn't matter whether it's a, um, you know, a, a solid piece of fabric like this, or a pattern, like either pattern like this or like this, you know, uh, is, the seams still have to be met up and that's what gives it the nice little equal proportion, okay? So sew all the way across. Okay. And then you can trim your corners if the bulk is in the way. Um, of you and, and you can uh, the best actually choice for stuffing these is a little bit of batting and some wa crushed crushed walnut shells apparently you can get it at pet stores it helps sharpen your needles as you're putting it in the pin cushion and or I, I thought even sand because sand always sharpens my shovel as I you know put it in it sort of thing so why wouldn't it kind of and, and keep it clean and uh, so why wouldn't it do to 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 that right but you never know, but uh, I did read up on it. So walnut shells, crushed walnut shells is one of the best options to stuff it with, okay? And of course, if it's just being a decorative piece and not actually technically a pin cushion, you could do whatever you like with it, okay? So look at him, isn't it cute? All right, you can take your little scissors and poke out the corners. Be a little gentle, don't go through your fabric, okay? Poke out your corners just a smidge. Unless you want to be a round chicken. Oh, see, that's what I mean. Let's turn that right side out. I must have missed the corner. It didn't come in down enough. No, I didn't. See, look, there was like four stitches missing. That's always good to check. Could you imagine if you found that after you'd stuffed it all and sewed it all up and everything? That would have been very disappointing. Hopefully you're enjoying your weekend and it's a nice one out there. So it's a mix, mixed weather here. Kind of getting sick of it. I just want my sunshine and my plants to grow. Okay, so now that he's pretty much done, we're gonna stuff it with a little bit and then put some of the little beads in between to give it a little bit of weight. Okay, and this, it's best to give this a little, almost like you're meshing the fibers back together sort of thing. You're just fluffing them up, really. Loosening. Okay, and just fluff it in there, stuff it in, get it right into those corners. You can get a chopstick or, you know, a stylus or something like that. Just get it in right into those corners, okay. And then in the gaps in between, you can put the beads and it gives it a little bit of weight. Okay, and stick it up in his head because you're going to make sure there's, those pins are going to go for his eyes. And of course, you, I'm sure you got lots of different colored pins. Or like I say, you could just use buttons if you like. Especially if it's, you know, it's just going to be a, you know, something for a kid. Like this great little kid's toy too. Like, you know, obviously not with the pins in it. <laughs> Do a couple of like French knots for eyes or something like that. Okay. Okay, so now he's pretty much stuffed. I'm going to take a tablespoon or so in here and make a heck of a mess like I always seem to do. Because that's just who Lorlin is of the mama pop culture. <laughs> I'm nothing of always making a mess. I'm just kind of shove them in there and poke it around with your finger. Get them in. Okay. Oops. Yeah, that's going to be hard on the foot later. I'll find it. Just give it a little bit of something, substance. Oh, that kind of seam kind of came out a little bit. I guess I'll have to hand stitch that closed. I'm here, you. Okay, I got some needles here. And then you just literally close up the bottom. Super easy. And that's done. You know, you got yourself your little chicken. Pretty cute, eh? Oops. I need a bigger knot on that one. And then you just, like, like I said, seal it up on the bottoms. You can either run it through the machine if you can get your, your little, you know, chicken under there, but I can't. There we go. So hopefully you'll do this even if it's just uh, something for you or some a gift for somebody else or what have you. But I think it's uh, it's kind of cute. It's unique. It's uh, you know a little bit of a scrap buster. And like I said, you can make as uh, big a size or a little size as you like. 
with the uh, you know different colored beaks and the uh, this orange fabric was donated from one of my uh, friends named Pam and she was on a trip recently and picked up a quite a lovely little score of fabric that is from over from the the from uh, Ireland and stuff like that so it was really kind of cool to see what she collected and she gave me a free this magazine too really oops really cool I'm looking forward to looking uh, for some patterns in it and hopefully I can help share them with you so yes pretty cool I don't usually get stuff from the UK so it's nice to be able to look at something kind of funky so something different than what we got going on here I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but it's nice to look at different ideas from different places right so anyways I'm just going to finish this up and I don't want to be too tedious on camera so you get the idea and then we're just going to finish the chicken and then he's going to be done and you pop a little eye in it we'll use yellow because you can really see that on the red and there he is okay thanks everybody for watching little uh, weekend project and uh, hopefully you make one of these little chickens and if you do I want to see a picture okay <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned, and don't forget to check out uh, Long Run Wednesdays. I think we're going to be doing a Quilt of Valor coming up on next one, all right? So ch check it out, or the one after that. I can't remember which one is going on, but, you know, we'll do it. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Don't forget to like and subscribe and upload, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.